know, every time that we come down to Kansas, it's like coming home, being down here with Dan Thurston at the Lazy D. The reason I love outfitting is the people you meet and the friends you make. Boy, it's so much fun when Mark and Terry come in. You know, over the years, we've become good friends. This year, we had a special guest in, Michael Hanback. He's been a longtime friend of mine and Terry's, and it's always nice to have Michael in, whether we're deer hunting or turkey hunting. We always have a great time wherever we go, but Kansas was special for deer and turkeys and all that, so I was looking forward to coming back and hunting it. You know, we drove in in the dark. Mike had a late flight in. Short night. We were up really, really early the next morning. Got in the truck, you know, Dan's doing a little strategy session, kind of telling us where he's taking us. So Dan talked to me on these windy days like this. I mean, she's galing. What are, what's the plan, Dan? Well, traditionally, I like to hunt the north sides of some south bluffs, you know, some big high bluffs, because that wind will be jetting over the top of those bluffs, so the bottoms or bases are pretty calm. And uh, we'll set up on a little bit of stuff uh, kind of at the bases of these big bluffs. I guess you get to be an expert windy turkeys out here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, we should have got uh, Dorothy and Toto training on this. <laughs> we had a nice little drive in, walked in across the field. It was extremely windy. It's more like this now. Can you imagine what it's going to be like in the middle of the day? <laughs> you know, Mike commented on the wind, just very, very windy. We wondered whether we'd even hear a gobbler. What do you think, just the hen or a hen and a jack? Hen, jack, hen, jack. I had a plan in mind. I could have came in here yesterday to harvest one of my birds, but I will save it for the boys, you know. Well, true to form, Dan had us in the right place. There was a bird gobbling really, really close. And uh, we were just hoping he was ready to work. It sounds like just one turkey, but which is unusual for out here. But it could be more. He's just doing the gobbling. So he's gobbling early, and he's gobbling early. He's gobbling pretty good early, so. Dan got in the background. Mike's the shooter. I set off to the side. I was going to call and run a second camera. I'm getting some views. Matt's got the camera rolling. All of a sudden, this bird flies down right in front of us. Immediately, he starts strutting and gobbling. I just kept calling. We had the decoys out there. He started coming. Mike makes a perfect shot. Here we are, 30 minutes into his hunt, and he's already got a bird. Good shot, Mike, baby. <laughs> oh, oh, so awesome. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank buddy. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> How about the rush, man? Is that a rush? Was he gobbling good or what? Oh, baby. Congratulations, <laughs> Rush. Woo. How about it, mister? How about it, Dan? Awesome, dude. Leave it to Dan Thurston to get you on him. And leave it to Dan Thurston to see more birds coming. Boy, did he come good or what? We go out to get Mike's bird. The celebration had just begun, and Dan sees more turkeys coming this way. Well, it's a scramble. I've got a tag. I get the gun from Mike. We reload it. Mike sets up to my left. Dan decides to grab a camera, and we're hoping that this pans out. Man, there's a bunch of turkeys. Mike shot his bird. There's a bunch of turkeys out in the field. We're gonna switch positions here and try this again. Dan moves off to my right. Mike's off to the left. The decoys are out in front of us. And I noticed one of the decoys was upright. So I had to make a move. Got the decoy set up, came back to the tree. All of a sudden, here come some birds. Can you tell what those are? Uh, they're definitely 
These are gobblers. They have gobblers. I can't tell what they are, but they're running. They look like gobblers. They're jakes, aren't they? Jakes? They were jakes. Jakes came in, worked the decoys, finally shifted off, and I had the new little hatchet call, and I put it on my boot, and I'm just sitting there squeaking it real soft. Mike's calling, I'm calling, Dan's calling. All of a sudden, here they come around the corner. Here they come, they started running. That bird was in full strut, a whole spring flock. What a sight. What an awesome morning, Mike. We got one flopping there. We got one dead behind the tree. Mike killed his early this morning. He was gobbling so hot he came in. How about that, buddy? And uh, just shot a nice Kansas turkey. Thank you, Dan Thurston. How about it? Anytime contact, mister. Lazy D, baby. <laughs> I bet Dan said he'll be to this spot in 30 <laughs> minutes, you know? Just, just be well. patient. <laughs> the only thing more enjoyable than turkey hunting for me is to share it with really close friends. And that's what we have in Mike Handback and Dan Thurston. They're longtime friends of mine and Terry's, and uh, it'll be a long time before we miss a season here at the Lazy D. Well, just another morning at the Lazy D. <laughs> How about it, mister? <laughs> awesome. Thank you, man. Good Good thanks, guys. That great. was so thanks much fun, as usual. Man. You guys put some great shots on me. I'll tell you. We always have fun, and we usually have success, and sometimes we have some tough times, but this morning wasn't one of the tough times. Saw it all. You know, you go through turkey hunts and you hear the gobbling, and that gets you excited, but I'm as excited to be sitting here with Dan and Mike as anything, because coming down here to the Lazy D is like coming home. We haven't hunted together the last couple years. It's like having an old brother, an old friend in. And uh, Dan's been seeing these birds, and when we set up, you know, we heard the one gobbling. Just one bird. Just one turkey. He was a hot turkey. I knew there had to be more than that around here, though. I've been seeing him. Nine inches stretch. <laughs> so Mike shoots. We go to get him dances. More birds. And there they are in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> There's a mad dash, a mad scramble. Everybody get ready. And then it wasn't long. The hens and the long beard and the other Jake came, and that was the end of him. What do you think, Mike? Well, I tell you, that was one of the most incredible mornings that I've had in a long time. And to share it with you guys made it all the more special, and I just appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Really Thank appreciate you. the all moment. Right. Awesome. You know, it's the first day of our hunt. It's windy, but we're going to keep on going. We're going to keep driving, try and get into some more birds. And if I know Dan Thurston, we'll be on them in a flash. You know, the action's been fast and furious out here at the Lazy D with Dan Thurston, but Terry's coming in. And uh, I'm looking forward to hunting with old brother Terry. I look forward to every year spending some time with Mark and hunting Kansas. Uh, we're in with Dan Thurston, and it's always been good to us down here. And a real noted writer is in camp, Mike Handback, and I wasn't about to miss out on that. Went out, put some birds to bed, howled at them, got them to gobble back, and uh, we had birds to the left of us and right of us, so we felt like they were going to come to this field. Well, I call it spoon-fed, and there's nothing like getting spoon-fed. Those guys went out and and did all the roosting and uh, knew exactly where the turkeys were roosted right above the creek. I grabbed the handy cam, got some night shot footage of Mike Handback who's with us and Terry walking in. Jared was gonna be running the camera. Well, we get all set up, you know, and we're situated. I turn around and I start glassing a little bit. Randy had pointed some birds out on the way in. So I was looking at them through the uh, binoculars and we're sitting within 40 or 50 yards of all these hens roosted in the tree here. We got turkeys roosted right here behind us. And we're hoping that they're gonna fly across the creek here down into this alfalfa field. I can see three of them in a tree right here. Mike's off in the distance a little bit, kind of taking it all in, and Mark and I are sitting right together. So it was a great setup. Those guys put us right in the turkey's lap. 
very little goblin this morning. I mean, they have really, really hushed down. I just decided to go ahead and call because I was hearing some distant gobbling and I'm yelping on the new hatchet call. I keep calling them, just soft calling, and sometimes when they're not gobbling well, you just gotta keep it up. Keep up the rhythm and just hope that something's on its way. Even though they're not answering, they may be on their way. Well, we were kind of looking to the right because the turkeys that we uh, had planned on coming into our position pitched out over the top of the creek, over the field, and way off in a distance to the right. And I'm looking left. All of a sudden, I glance up and see a, a gobbler strutter coming right to us. And I had to get my call down and start hiding it at that point so the turkey didn't see me. How nice was that? Woo, son. Man, oh man. Boy, and he's got good hooks on him, too. I bring the turkey back, and this, I don't know that it's ever happened to me, but uh, Mark and I get together, you know, and we're kind of going through the celebratory uh, hey, happenings man. there in the end. You know, I was tickled awesome. to, to get a turkey like that. I could tell he had great hooks, good spurs, longest spurred turkey I've ever shot. <laughs> hey, hey, looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> He's off like a road runner, dives off the back of the cliff down into the creek, and uh, for a second there, I thought we were going to lose the turkey. Floating fast. <laughs> these things only happen to Terry. I don't know how in the world he gets into these situations. Turkey goes in the creek. There's only one way to get him out. We got a problem here. Terry killed his turkey, <laughs> and he killed running back. Here's Terry. Yeah, he's under that little snag. Am I going to have to go swimming? I think the last one I killed in Kansas, I got wet. Freak. Has he got good spurs, you said? Yeah, he's got good hooks on him. That's the best bird turkey I've ever killed. <laughs> What's up with that? He's under that snag? You know, I love him like a brother, but I wasn't going to get that turkey. <laughs> Only Terry gets into situations like this. Look at him up there. All right, you're right above him. He goes into the water and boom, he goes up oh, over his boot. Oh, did you see that? Well, I guess it wouldn't be it wouldn't be Kansas if I wouldn't have had to get my feet wet. I had to go in after him. Boy, he does have some spurs there. Oh, wow, look at the spurs on him. Funny moments out here in Kansas, but we got the bird and what spurs. And then the story really started. We're in the field, creeks the line, and apparently the neighboring landowner thought we were over on his place, which is, I mean, that's reasonable, but he comes down, he's riding his four-wheeler, taking his dogs out. He was convinced we had, we had shot had his him. turkey, but we were on the right yeah, place. How it. about that guy? It's a good thing you had your bird. What? Yeah, we killed one. And I know the neighbor uh, was thinking that we possibly shot the turkey over on his side of the creek, which, which in fact didn't happen. You know, we obviously got footage here of the birds out on our side in this beautiful lush alfalfa field. And, and uh, the neighbor wasn't real tickled that, that we killed the turkey, but we did and got him out of the water. Fantastic morning out in Kansas. These things only happen to Terry. How about that guy? He's worried we're in there shooting his turkeys. The river's the line. We're obviously over here. Bird fell in the river. We got him out. He's going to be trespassing for too long. Yeah, oh, if he yeah. keeps coming over here, he'll be the one trespassing. Now oh, there's a trophy. I mean, look at the spurs on that turkey, Terry. That's the best spurred turkey I've ever killed. As long as we've been hunting, that's the first really, really long spurred turkey I've ever taken. That's about as good as they get. I mean, really, that's a heck of a bird right there. What a, what a weird hunt, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. You know, he, 
He flew down. We thought these turkeys to the right were going to come in, and he slipped in pretty pretty quiet yeah. on us. And you kind of watch left, and I watch right. Mm -hmm. I was calling with the uh, hatchet, and I'm glad you brought my attention to him coming because I could have spooked him with the hand movement, so I, I moved it down, and he came right in. He didn't gobble. He strutted one time. He didn't gobble, but he did go into full strut. And uh, Typical of a long spurred turkey. I'm wondering, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why they weren't gobbling this morning. You know, we had these hens roosted 40, 50 yards from us here, and I did get a glimpse of them with your little uh, palm quarter. But I don't know why they're not gobbling, I, and I, I don't know if it's the heat. You know, here we were in Iowa three days ago, and it was 25 degrees. And yesterday, when I came down here, my thermometer showed 91 degrees. Hot. Right? So they dislike it maybe as much as we do. Too hot. And how about me stunning him? I guess I didn't hit him very good because we were <laughs> brought him back. All of a sudden, he got up and, and just made it to the edge of the embankment there and fell into the creek. That's why he's wet, but we got him. We got the bird. Wouldn't be Kansas if I didn't get wet, would it? <laughs> that was a good hunt, though, buddy. Kansas was red hot for us, but what was it like for Jason Irish? He's hunting with the shoddy family of Blue River Whitetails. Today, we're doing something a little different. We're going to go and take the guide's daughter out. She's 18 years old and she wants us to come out and try to film her. Ready to go? Yep. All right. I'm kind of nervous. Last time you filmed me, I missed something for the first time ever. And miss. Preston told me I was going to miss it. That means I won't miss it. Good. You don't want them out here for a dry sneak in there. Boy, they sure came in pretty, didn't they? Yeah, that was, was awesome. It was exciting. 
you know, we were in here this morning and we hunted hard for three or four hours and they gave us the slip and we decided, well, let's just go home and you know, go back to the house there and get something to eat and take it easy and we'll come back in here tonight and see if we can't outsmart these old boss toms and it worked out to our surprise, you know, they were going to come right back into roost and it was awesome. We were watching birds up here and pretty soon we hear some gobble down on the completely opposite side of the tree I'm sitting next to. Jason's telling me he's going to shoot the one on the right, I'm going to get the one on the left and getting behind some trees and had a little trouble like holding my gun up for that long, getting really nervous, starting to shake. I think Jason was nervous too and finally they gave us a shot. We shot almost simultaneously and we got them both. You know we made some good shots on these birds. It's a lot of fun. It was awesome. Well let's go and show these to your mom. Okay. What an incredible hunt. Taking two birds at once like that is an impressive feat. Now, I'm headed to Iowa to take good friend and longtime turkey hunting partner Tad Brown out for an afternoon hunt. We decided to drop into this pretty bottom field for an afternoon hunt. Try to catch one before he's going to roost. Got a feather flex decoy out there and I'm gonna take my hatchet and cherry bomb, and do a little soft call and see if I can strike. What a great afternoon hunt. It's been tough, it seems like. These turkeys are hinned up everywhere we've been, and uh, we've been talking a lot about afternoon hunts. You know, traditionally, spring turkey hunting is a morning off the roost hunt. And uh, this year, for us, it's been uh, afternoon, evening hunts. And uh, a guy kind of needs to change his tactics a little bit. And uh, kind of, instead of going where the turkeys are roosted, you kind of want to go maybe where the turkeys you think are going to roost to get ahead of them. And uh, they always like to work these nice, pretty bottom fields. These food plots before going to roost has, you know, been kind of the typical scenario over the years. So we've uh, got some blinds built. We come in, we get in the blinds, and try to work these turkeys before they go to roost and having good luck. As you can see, we had four nice long beards come in, and they were looking for one last, one last sling with the girls before they went to bed tonight. And anyway, it paid off for us. as Tad heads off into the sunset from another successful turkey hunt. Let's shift over now to Wisconsin and join Brian Thompson and Jason Franzen for opening day of spring turkey season. Today's the opening day of uh, Wisconsin spring turkey season and because these birds have not been called to and because we've been patterning them and Jason's been diligent about glassing fields in the morning and the last couple mornings he's been out, he's been scouting, he's been glassing fields, watching these birds and he's had these birds pattern into this field. Well, there's a lot of different ways to hunt turkeys, and this year, Brian and I decided to go against our personal instinct. Uh, our instinct is to, typically, we like to run and gun and chase the birds and try and make something happen. Man, that is a pretty sight. It's the day before my turkey season here in Wisconsin. It is cold. My thermometer said 19 this morning, but Brian and I took the time to get up and do a little scouting the day before, and unfortunately, the birds are marching right away from where we've got have a ground blind set up, but they started there this morning, so hopefully tomorrow morning will bring good things. Jason is a very detailed individual. This morning he was checking to make sure he had his turkey tag, he was checking to make sure he had all his uh, uh, you know, 
gun and shells and all that stuff. And it was it, our plan strategy that we were going to follow through was stick to it, not move, stay in this field, stay in the blind, and eventually a turkey was uh, you know, supposed to come by the blind. opening of Wisconsin's turkey season. Man, birds were just throttling off. It was just one of those mornings you lived to be in the turkey woods. And uh, in fact, Jason got in a dueling match with the hen and brought the hen right into the decoys. And we were so excited. We were thinking, man, the plan's coming all together. For sure, she's going to be dragging baggage. And this town's going to strut right into our decoys, and it's going to work out just as planned. A couple hours into it, you know, your excitement level drops. The hen walks away. Um, not much is happening. And um, it's then when you start to question what your plan is and, and should you really stick to your plan. About two hours into this morning, I, my patience got the better of me again, of course, and I just had to get out of the blind and take a look. We hadn't heard any gobbles in over an hour, so I decided to glass a large dirt field that's freshly planted just behind our blind. This really isn't my style of hunting. It's almost two hours into daylight here, and the birds have totally shut up. I. I'm an aggressive hunter, I like to go after the birds, and we built this blind with the intention of staying put, but I gotta find out where the birds are. I, they gobbled off quite a ways back. I'm just gonna see if I can glass them there. So as Jason's climbing back into the blind, having not seen anything, and just about ready to you know, pack up gear and say, let's get out of here, he pauses and he turns to me and says, where's the turkey? <laughs> He's only 20 yards away. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I've heard that one before. As I'm stepping into the blind, I glanced up and I couldn't believe it. Into our field, 20 yards away from our blind, stepped a tom and he, he had me hung out to dry. I had one foot in the blind, one foot out. My gun was laying in the blind. Well, luck was on our side. That bird kept popping in and out of strut, in and out of strut. Thank goodness we had those feather flex decoys out there that was drawing his attention away from us. He had no idea we were there. And finally, that bird went into strut, and I said, Jason, kill him. Grab your gun and kill him. whisper kill him I had it was basically last resort I had to pick up the gun I'm a right-handed shooter so I had to come across my body and I, I did as fast as I could and luckily for me my shot found its mark and what a just phenomenal way to start the Wisconsin 2004 turkey season well this isn't quite the way we envisioned the season starting but the results are exactly what we had hoped for this morning we decided to try and sit it out and about two hours in, patience got the better of me again, so I wanted to glass the field and just see if there was anything close. Well, I didn't see anything. As I'm stepping back into the blind, I look up and out 20 yards away into our field steps at Tom, and there I was totally hung out to dry. Brian said kill him, so I last resort, grabbed my gun and let one fly, and luckily for me, my shot found its mark, and here we have just a beautiful eastern turkey on a beautiful spring morning. What a great way to start the season. Brian and I have a little agreement that the person that's gunning always owes the cameraman breakfast and one thing I know for sure is my stomach is growling because I can't wait to go buy Brian breakfast. We cherish thrills like Jason experienced on his hunt and we couldn't wait to share those thrills with some guys that may be unfamiliar to you but very close to us. The uh, guys in the studio that spend so much time behind the, the keyboard punching all the keys and trying to make uh, this product that we produce, trying to make it look as good as they possibly can, never really get the opportunity very often to go out and hunt. Terry wanted to take all the guys at the office out turkey hunting and I immediately said, brilliant idea, let's get these guys involved. About two weeks ago, Dad and Mark came into the studio one day and, and they told us about an idea they had to take uh, the four editors out for opening day of turkey season. We have Jeremy Murley, Aaron Crozier, Jim Howe, and Matt Drury. 
in our opinion, the best production staff in the industry. Well, here it is, it's my turn to hunt. Uh, I've been an editor for Drury Outdoors for about three and a half years. Uh, Mark and Terry asked me if I wanted to get in front of the camera, and man, I, I can't wait. Of the four, Matt Drury's the only one that's hunted in the past. He hunted with Terry when he was younger, but then when he went to college, he kind of got away from it a little bit. It's been about four or five years since the last time I went turkey hunting, so when they when they came up with this idea, I was I was pretty excited. So I know we were talking around the office and everybody was excited. Jim Howe had to take his hunter safety course to get ready. Uh, Jeremy and Aaron decided they didn't want to hunt, but they wanted to observe. Well, first thing this morning when we woke up, I look over and what do I see? Mark with a camera in my face. A lot of nervous energy this morning when everybody got up. It was a short night, nobody slept very well. We tossed, we turned. The wind blew 40 and 50 mile an hour all night last oh. night. It was really loud inside the cabin. You ready to go turkey hunting? It's 4.15 a.m. I got about 15 minutes of sleep. <laughs> um, I'm halfway ready to go. <laughs> Another 15 and you'd be good, Richard. Oh, yeah. Another 30 minutes. What is this? It's a fat man. Didn't get enough sleep. It's Aaron. Look at Jeremy. Jeremy good to go? He's already dressed. So we split up. Jeremy and Matt went with me. Jim and Aaron went with Terry and Coon Dog. That's a good turkey hunter's breakfast right there. Take his treats. Yeah. Soda, milk, margarine, whatever. Kill that bird, horse. We'll be down here eating bacon and eggs. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. So we drive out. And we had to leave really early because we had a 30 minute drive and I wanted to get in here in the pitch black because we're walking right by this turkey. I could kind of feel the urgency of the of the moment. Mark was walking about 100 miles an hour. So uh, I was just trying to keep up. You could see the stars. It was a, it was a clear morning and uh, I was just getting raring to go. We're sitting there and I finally spot the turkey. I zoom the camera in on it. Matt spots the turkey and uh, I get a little interview from Matt. Turkey's roosted about maybe 40, 40 yards away, right across the field. And hopefully he's gonna fly out right in front of me and give me a good shot. We hope so anyways. But he probably won't. <laughs> but he probably won't. You, know, you always hope that he's gonna pitch down and walk in front of you, but you really don't expect it. You know, I looked up and uh, I could see the, the turkey silhouette in the, in the tree line and the wind had it moving back and forth. It was just, you know, I. I started getting more excited and it was just, I knew I had to get ready to, ready to rock. Bird didn't gobble much on the limb. A few crows went off and he gobbled. I didn't want to yelp to him until he hit the ground. He's strutting and I'm panning back, getting the focus and rolling to Matt's gun barrel, showing the Supermax choke and he's not coming that well. At first, that turkey didn't gobble at all, so you know, I was, I was kind of worried. I thought he was actually gonna, gonna walk away from us, but the more Mark yelped, the hotter he got. Go get him, boys. Good job, Matt. Good shot. Thanks, buddy. How about it, buddy? Woo! How about it? Yeah! How about that, Jeremy? Was that a show? <laughs> what about it, Matt? 
Yes! Yes! Hold on, I'm not dying. Hey, that is a crazy hunt. Wasn't it good? Congratulations, buddy. Thanks. Put her there, man. <laughs> that was fun. Well, you don't take after your dad. <laughs> you hit him. <laughs> I must get that from mom's side. There you go. You got that right. Once that bird went down, man, it was just such an overwhelming feeling. You know, I it's it's been a while. It's been five years or so. So it was, you know, it felt good to be back out here. Well, guys, how you think Jim and Terry and Aaron are doing? Well, I don't know. I hope they have as much luck as we had. Yeah, no kidding. I hope so. Wasn't this an awesome hunt? This was fun. It was definitely fun. It was interesting. Matt did a great job. Put a perfect shot on the bird, and it was the end to the. I mean, it was a classic hunt. Yeah. The bird, I thought, filmed him flying down. He strutted all the way in nice and slow, and then the tempo picked up. Yeah, worked perfectly for us. It was awesome. Did everything they're supposed to. Congrats, Matt. Thank you. Congrats, Jeremy. Jeremy, and now we can go eat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for everything you do for us and all of our customers. I can't wait to see if Jim got one. Uh, I hope his luck was as good as mine this morning. But hard telling because he's got dad guiding him. <laughs> Well, we got all our gear collected and uh, old coon dog had been doing some scouting for us on one of our properties and built a blind. He took the time to build a, a cedar blind and three big hay bales, big round bales. And uh, we just knew that we were gonna have the cover we needed for all four of us to sit in this blind because it's not easy to hunt with four people, especially with these turkeys. So we eased on up the hill, we got into our blind, nice little blind coon dog set up for us. Uh, Terry was in the middle. Uh, Coon Dog and I were on either side and, you know, just waiting for something to happen. Unfortunately, it was one of these mornings where they just weren't talking at all. You know, we had extremely poor weather. Well, we decided to stand up, you know, real slow-like, and just kind of look around and see what's out there. Just as I creeped up over the bale, I saw this gobbler out in the field by this other hay bale. There's another round bale down the field, maybe 100 or 125 yards. And uh, I thought, oh man, look at this, he's coming our way. You know, that gobbler's coming in, the hens are feeding right in front of him. He's strutting. Man, this is awesome. This is the first time I've ever seen a, a gobbler coming in like this. It's way too far, Jim. First time ever, I got a gorgeous gobbler right in front of me, just strutting, gobbling, and wouldn't you know it, I missed it. I messed it all up. Well, I've, I would love for Jim to have killed that turkey. It didn't work out, but we're not gonna give up. There's a lot of turkeys on this place. Even though they're not gobbling, we know where to go to try and get on one. So, Coon Dog's gonna uh, lead us around the place and see if we can't find another one for old Jim. Matt gonna give you trouble. Oh, man. Huh? I don't even wanna hear it from him. Well, who'll be worse, him or Mark? Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt has no compassion. None. He gets that from Mark, you know, yeah. not from me. Well, here it is, day three, my first ever turkey hunt. We're gonna change things up a little bit. Today, I'm with Terry and his son, Matt. We took our time getting down here this morning, but, uh, you know, I felt kind of like we were on a wild goose chase. We didn't we didn't have any roosted, you know, we didn't hear anyone dad owl hooted, so, you know, I thought it was all for naught. Yeah, we got to the field edge. We're kind of just scooting along, looking up in the, you know, glass in the trees, seeing if we can spot anything. Next thing you know, Terry stops and looks up, and we're 25 yards from a tree with birds roosted in it. We're sitting there, and. We see, you know, eight or nine birds, but I only saw one long beard, and uh, and then all of a sudden he started walking the limb. I thought for sure he was going to pitch out on the other side. You know, because we kind of just stumbled on these birds, we didn't have any time to set up other than ourselves. So we, you know, we were unable to put any decoys out. We did the best we could just to get down and get back in cover and get set up before they could see or hear us.
it all happened so fast I couldn't believe it I mean here it is my first ever turkey hunt and you know we, we can't even set decoys out we haven't even called and here comes a bird right there okay. Pick up the bird, you know. I, you know, I stood on the neck just to make sure, you know, it was, it was done flopping around. But its legs were kicking pretty good still, and you know, he was having a tough time picking it up. Okay, pick him up, bring him back if you can. <laughs> pick him up. Hey, make sure you grab both legs. Matt. You take the gun. Get a death grip on both those legs, Jim. You know, me being so inexperienced, I didn't even know how to pick the bird up. Matt was standing on its head, making sure that bird wasn't moving anywhere. And you know, they're saying, pick it up, pick it up. And the, the bird was still, you know, his he was still kicking pretty good. And uh, I was trying to grab the one leg, but the other leg kept tucking under. And Terry said, make sure you grab them both, get a death grip on them. And I was gonna make sure I wasn't gonna get spurred. <laughs> I can just imagine what Mark's going to be saying and thinking when he sees that footage of me trying to get that bird's leg. Oh man, yeah, they uh, they started gobbling right behind us and uh, I, my heart started racing and, you know, we, we nearly walked right up on these birds. I mean, we're not 15 yards, 20 yards from the tree that they were roosted in. And I was going to make sure, darn sure I wasn't going to miss yeah, this time. Yeah. I had to adjust my scope a little bit, the, uh, the red dot. Got it on him, I felt good, and uh, I did everything perfect, just, just the way you, they said to, you know, uh, just relax, just, you know, gently squeeze the trigger and yeah. let it surprise you, and man, it did. But, uh, all I'm, the hard work paid off, huh? All the hard work paid off. We spent a lot of time after uh, a turkey for me in my first hunt here, and, you know, we got rained out yesterday, and this morning, I felt pretty optimistic about it. You know, I knew it was clearing up, and, oh man, I just couldn't wait to get out here, and this is, this is unbelievable. I, I can't, I can't thank uh, Mark and Terry enough to let me come and do this. This is phenomenal. Woo, still feel that adrenaline rush. My goodness. Well, now I got my turkey, I got the tag on, I got my orange out, I'm ready to roll. I can't wait to roll back in and show Mark. It definitely completes the experience when you have new faces in camp. And as our editors took off, anticipation started to build for our next guest in. We're lucky in what we do, we get to host a lot of people. And this year, Jason Gilbertson with the NWTF was in. Right, get in front. Right, get ready because this is probably going to be quick when he comes over. We start checking out these little burn fields, and uh, about that quick, we heard a turkey gobble right over the hill. most dramatic kill in the world, but they came so hard it was hard to get the camera on them. Awesome, Great awesome. Missouri hunt. Can't get beat these Easterns, can you? That's right. Good got bird. some hooks, got a beard, got some weight too. Yeah, he's heavy. Thank well, you. congratulations. Thank you very much. Good job. Boy, he's been a strutting. Yep. All right, Jason's got a flight. Coondog looks at his watch, he says, got him just in time, we got an hour left. 
head to the check station. Jason checks him in. He heads to the airport. Now it's me and Coon Dog, and the fun was just beginning. I haven't had a chance to hunt this year yet, and Mark said I was out of the box, so I was ready. Steve dropped his vest. We start crawling through the field trying to see these turkeys. We know they're right here with us. As we got closer, we could see them fading off into the timber. So we started yelping at them a little bit. All of a sudden they turn, they're walking away. I told dog, I said, let's hammer them. Okay, he's coming. Keep hammering him. We're cutting, yelping. Finally, body posture turns. They're coming right at us. There's nothing like seeing a turkey facing you and gobbling and coming. Ready? Let them come. They're coming right at us, you see them? The one on the left. What an exciting hunt. We saw these birds from the road and we moved up here towards the point. We got out of the truck, we walked around the point because we thought they were gonna walk up to holler. But as we was walking over there, Mark goes, oh, strutter in the field. So we dropped our vest, had to belly crawl up to this point. Well, when we finally got to where we could see them, we started working them and right off the bat, they didn't gobble too much. So all of a sudden Mark said, hey man, we gotta start hammering them. So we started hammering them and they started getting interested. Boy, they gobbled, strut, I could hear them drumming. I saw them heads coming up through there, and I tell you what, I was getting really pumped about that time. Oh, I'm glad I made a good shot. Remington three and a half heavy shot. I tell you what, it was great. Put a hit on them, and I, I can't wait to see it because I'm sure it's a smash. I know it was a smash in my eyes. Great morning. Jason got a bird. Coon Dog got a bird. I tell you what, it don't get any better for a combination. We put that turkey down, and, and the best part about it is that's my first field turkey on film, so that, that was really exciting for me. Coon Dog is one of our most appreciated team members, and I'm glad he got a chance to hunt before our next guest arrived. Matt Moret's been a friend of mine for years, and this year he approached me at a show and said he had a different idea. You know, Mark and I talked this year at some of the trade shows, and I have been absolutely pumped to get to North Missouri and share a hunt with Mark and Steve first week of turkey season. Ready for breakfast? Or dinner. How many times do you get to go to the woods with guys that are not only your competitors, but you've competed with in turkey calling contests your whole life? You know, he wanted to go, him and Eddie, myself and Terry, and go enjoy hunting together. And immediately we said, it's on. All right, we were going to do old guys against the young guys. Eddie and Terry, myself and Matt. So I met Steve Stoltz over in Milan. Matt came up and uh, we just sat around, shot the breeze a little bit. We were really looking forward to getting out the next morning. I'd been lucky enough to go into a spot that Steve pointed me in the right direction, roosted a turkey. We knew where one was gonna be, or we hoped we did. I thought I might've spooked him. Next morning, I got the little handy cam out and I just wanted to film some reality-based stuff and I turned the night shot off. Well, Matt, this morning, um, you're gonna shoot first, all right, buddy? Uh, no, you're gonna shoot first, Mark. No, you're gonna <laughs> shoot first. <laughs> Let's flip for it. 
No, I don't want to fly far. <laughs> you shoot first. Well, you went and roosted the turkey. Why should I shoot first? I think I might have spooked him, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. I got you. We're walking in, and it's pitch black, and Matt hoots, and boom, that turkey hits it. <laughs> We get down there, and Matt's got a little surprise. Wow. Check that out. That's a real hen. When we got to the woods, I had a little surprise for Mark. It was a real mounted hen decoy. Callie Morris made it from a fall turkey. So where do you want, where do you want the decoy that you can feel? Straight out of about the yard. On the other side of the tree. Yeah, right by that double tree. Well, we were on a beautiful point, and, uh, Here's Steve Stoltz, Matt Brett, and myself. I mean, this is a first for me, and I know a first for those other guys. How exciting to be sitting there listening to a gobbler, gobbling like he was, and be sitting there with really good friends. We started yelping. I hit him on a super illuminator. Matt started chiming in with his call, and immediately this bird started responding. One long, the show was about to start. This turkey was hitting everything. Seemed like the harder we called, the faster he came. You read about and you see in videos and you dream of a turkey that will work through the woods and strut and work to the call. And this one was everything we dreamed about. You know, we started yelping and uh, I wish Mark would have let me call just a little more. He got pumped up and you know, when that happens, put your calls away because there's no use both of you trying to blow his brains out. Finally, the bird sees Matt's surprise, the live mounted hen, and he worked in like a charm. There he is. He's gone. I'm surprised that turkey had a voice left by the time he got up there. It wasn't long and here he came. He showed up just hanging out there looking for that hen. We're getting down to the end there, and Steve's panicking. He wants somebody to shoot, and I wasn't about to shoot that turkey. That was Matt's turkey. I like to let him get close, and man, he was sucking in, and he got up there, and he saw that, that hen decoy, and it was, it was all she wrote. He was locked right on her. Both of them were telling me to shoot, so I figured I had no choice. Go, Matt! What a shot, right. buddy! Good shot, bud! Matt makes a perfect shot, and it was just the end to a perfect morning. You know, once that shot goes off, all that adrenaline pours out, and it was the first time I'd ever been with Matt in the woods, period. It was an awesome, awesome scene out here in the spring woods. <laughs> Matt, aren't you just amazed at their beauty every time you oh, shoot a turkey? I mean, it, you can't help but shake, and, it, and you know it never stops. And it, I think it gets worse as we get older. I was trembling. I was so excited I because he gobbled so well coming in. You put us on him. I mean, you roosted him last night, and they were right here. But Stevie put us on him. I mean, that's true. Yeah. New spot, got permission on it, and he said, "Where do you want to go?" I said, "There's no excitement like going to a new spot." And we got lucky to get on a bird on a pretty point, especially with old friends. How about it? I, I, I agree. I couldn't yes, couldn't be more pleased than to be sitting here with you this morning. Well, it was just cool. You know, it was, it was an idea actually. Rick White had about. He said, "You know, why don't we try to to hunt with some of our friends in the industry? Because people think we're bitter enemies, but you know, we're all in this together. We're all in the same pie." And and, you know, hunting's what brought us together, what brought my career, your career, and, and there's no better way to grow up, is there? None. There's no better lifestyle than the outdoor lifestyle. And um, you're right, people do think everybody's competitors, but it's a small industry, as a lot of industries are, and uh, we're all friends. I Absolutely. Mean, Eddie, yourself, Terry, Alex, you know, the entire staff. I mean, I've been calling against you guys and vice versa, doing shows with you guys forever, and it's just nice to come together and share an experience together for all the, all the people that watch the video. Absolutely. Do you think uh, Eddie and Terry had the same luck we did? No, oh, I'm just sitting it. back drinking coffee. Are you kidding? They're probably not even up yet. I'm gonna get a tag on this one. We gotta go it. get you one. We'll be back taking a nap and they'll still be chasing There you go, buddy. <laughs> well, 
After we thought the excitement level could get no higher, we got on another bird, and this time, I was the one with my finger on the trigger. Matt called the bird in for me, and it was a relatively quick kill. Now the young guys have two, and the old guys have none. You know, Matt and I got extremely lucky, but we wanted to call Terry and Eddie and tell them, hey, we had some hot birds, let's get together. All right, we called Eddie and Terry earlier this morning, told them we needed help. I'm gonna call him again, see if they've had any luck, but I'm not gonna let them know that we killed two already. Hey, boy, what's going on? We have been on rockin' goblin turkeys all morning and haven't killed one. They've been on rockin' gobblers all morning long, haven't killed one. Well, we're gonna come down there because we, we need you to put us on some birds. There are no birds in my life. You've got your turkeys. <laughs> He goes, you got your turkeys. Huh? Two of them, mister. Did you really? Oh, you should have told me. Did they work for you? He know. Yeah. You killed two already. Yes. So we knew that when you left your message. <laughs> well, they were more than willing, after the morning they'd had, to try and come over to where some birds might work in a little bit closer. I think, according to the way you were talking, we'd probably have good luck over at, uh, at Downing, wouldn't we? Before we met up with them, we had something in mind. All right, we got Terry and Eddie coming, and Matt and I thought we'd go shopping and get them a little gift for when they show up. <laughs> okay. The Ben Gay is 566. The muscle and joint relief is a dollar. <laughs> okay, I think that's better anyway. Let's go with it. For all that ails Terry and Eddie, we're gonna solve their problems. We're gonna loosen them up. We're gonna walk these boys to death, and we will get them a turkey. Hey, big man. What are y'all doing? Riding around. Well, the old man's gonna have to take a butt whooping, so. Well, Matt and I knew you were having some trouble. <laughs> yep. So we thought we'd get you some muscle and joint pain relief. Well, I need it now. We'll rub that on you and get your knees loosened up. We'll go walk you a little bit, try and get you on a turkey. We know you guys are a little older, and it's about time to check back in for lunch over at the nursing home, but we'll get you right. <laughs> so we hand them the generic version of Ben Gay, and I think everybody had a little chuckle, but we knew we had business to do. We had about an hour and a half. Let's go get on a turkey. Well, it was certainly nice to get invited over here with Stevie. Uh, you know, he's always been so gracious to allow us to uh, hunt some of his properties, and today was no different. You know, when Matt first told me about the hunt with the Drury's, I, I was shocked. I think it's the first time ever in the industry that that uh, two different companies have gotten together. and We've all been friends for many, many years in the industry, and I think it was about time that, that uh, two different companies, two rival companies, get together and just have a great hunt. How could you help but be excited about it as a hunter, and uh, more or less as, you know, being a friend for years and years and then spending some quality time? Stoltz had a place in mind. We went out there, first strike or two, boom, turkey gobbles. We're back in the game. We got down there and, and I had the handy cam. I was trying to get a second view. Dave and Eddie make it to the tree. I drop back with Terry, I'm getting his views. This turkey's eating everything up. Stoltz is yelping. I hit the illuminator a bunch. This turkey's coming. We all jump up, everybody's looking for a dead bird, and all I see is Eddie sitting there shaking his Get head. Get it, there we go, finally. No. Huh? No. Boy, I hated it for Eddie and Terry, and it goes back to what Uncle Marvin has said so many years. Some days you can't do anything right, some days you can't do anything wrong. Man, where were you at? I needed you backing me up. <laughs> well, I thought it was. <laughs> I didn't know where he was gonna pop Man, up. he was he was just right here, and then the next thing I knew, he gobbled right here, and then. All at once, that head popped up, and I had to turn hard to the left. And, uh, See, I thought he was going to come around the end of this point, but he ended up coming through the timber there, didn't he? He was probably a little bit too far, probably 20 steps or so. 20 steps? <laughs> Oh, Pretty good little strut zone, ain't it? Yeah, man. Steve was right on that deal. I saw some feathers fly. You pulled a few feathers on him, Eddie. I don't know what happened. I, you know, I thought that, you know, I, I was zeroed in on him, but. Uh, Dad gum. Ah. Uh, he was I down, guess he was down gobbling that ditch, and you wanted to get around here in the first place. <laughs> Well, you know turkeys well enough. You knew you need to get up on his left. Well, it looks like I need to go to shooting range. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and I obviously had the lucky day. We didn't do anything wrong. Birds came in. Poor Terry and Eddie, I mean, nothing went right for them. We're going to switch it up. I'm going to go with Eddie. Matt's going to go with Terry. We're going to change the luck, and hopefully everybody gets a bird out of this deal. Ready? It's on. 
Man, you know, the old guys, we couldn't do it yesterday, so I had to get me some reinforcements today, and, uh, but uh, got, uh, we kind of swapped it up a little bit and uh, after a big mishap, but uh, hopefully I get a chance to redeem myself today. Well, good old Terry, he went out roosting for us. Is that it? Oh, there's two there. There's two. Put one to bed, then proceeded to go on and hunt with Steve and Matt, and in the meantime, he put myself, Dave, Eddie, and Coon Dog in there on that turkey. And Dave knew where he was because he was with Terry when he when he roosted him. We slip in, it's dark, and I've got my little handy cam. I'm trying to get some behind the scenes stuff, and I film Eddie, and he's got that old decoy with him. We slipped up in there, and Dave and Eddie got set up at a big tree, and we got the decoy out in front, and then I move off to the side, and I wanted to film the side view of everything. Well, that turkey, he wasn't gobbling, and I wondered, did Terry put us in the wrong spot here? You know, in your mind, you start to wonder, okay, are we on the wrong point? Is Dave confused? Did dogs run under him? And finally, he let us know we were in the right spot. But one long turkey flew down, and I mean, the tension's on, because you don't know if he's gonna peek up over that hill or stay down on the bottom. One long from my view, I saw his fan coming up the hill. Turkey keeps on coming and working perfect, and I'm, I'm, I'm hand holding it, so I'm, I'm sitting there shaking, and I'm worried I'm shaking too much. And oh, it was just what a beautiful sight to watch it all through that camera. pulled in a little bit close to his body. I wanted to see some feathers fly this morning. <laughs> yes, sir. He flew, brother. Uh, appreciate <laughs> it, man. <laughs> hey, there wasn't no guests this morning. I was, wasn't gonna take no chances. That was a show, Eddie. Well, Coon Dog, you know, they always tell you not to shoot one in a strut. And, and the reason for it is if you shoot him, a lot of times you mess his tail feathers up. But, uh, you know, I was really wanting to let this, uh, Turkey riding Mark in uh, David's truck this morning. I usually say I want to let them ride in Eddie Salter's truck, but I'm riding with them this morning. But I appreciate you having me out here, boy. Oh, it's been gosh. great. Oh, I appreciate it, Eddie. Hey, Eddie, nice meeting you. Yes, I'm glad sir, you were buddy. Here, I've, I've enjoyed it. You know, I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't take nothing for it. And you know, I, I think that's the, you know, we, we, we look at a lot of things, and you know, going back and uh, you know, reliving the stories and telling the, you know, how to hunt went. I think that's more more about turkey hunting and actually killing the turkey. No question. I mean, I've known you most of my adult life. Probably I met you when I was about 18 or so, and it's just a real honor for me to be out here with you. I got, what a treat this year. I mean, I got to help with Matt yesterday and yeah. Eddie today, two of yeah. my heroes as far as the outdoor <laughs> industry is concerned. So well, that, get, that I, goes I both ways. Yeah. I didn't mean to step on you there, buddy, from but the hey, from I guarantee you. Hey, I tell you what, it's been a real enjoyable hunt, and. You know, one thing about it, y'all can share the same hunt with us. That's right, and that's what it's all about, brother. Good job, man. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I want to do one thing, though. I want to drive that big yellow truck. I think all right, it. we'll go get it. <laughs> We're getting her all signed up. Terry and I have been dreaming about this ever since Eddie and Matt pulled in the camp. So we're taking care of it. It's going to be Matt Moret and Mark and Terry Drury. Eddie Salter and Terry Drury. I've always wanted a real big yellow truck. That way nobody knows who you are. You know, you can't. This thing is about as camouflaged as camouflage gets. We got this little bitty sticker here. Look at all these big stickers on the side. Now we got a big truck, a big, big truck. I think this whole thing came together absolutely incredible uh, to be able to hunt with, with Eddie Salter, and Terry Drury, Mark Drury, Matt Moret, Dave Reisner, an outstanding cameraman. I think all of us just had an absolute blast on this hunt. We're gonna to have to do it again.
<laughs> you know, we can't stop this year because we had so much fun. Next year, we're planning a couple more days. We'll pick another part of the country, and we're going to do the same thing because you know what? Eddie and Terry got to catch Mark and I. You can see there, when we all get together, that we have four birds. One of those was mine, and the last one belongs to Terry. We got the old man on one, and he was able to have a great hunt for himself. To experience both of our hunts in full, check out H.S. Strutt's Cutting and Strutting, Volume 9. To me, to be able to come out here and, and share quality time with friends that's been over the years, but actually, this, you know, to show you as a, a viewer out there that, that buys our tapes, that, uh, you know, we can be in competition with each other, but that don't mean we can't be good friends. You know, I'd like to see Steve and Matt and Eddie and Mark uh, together more often because I mean to tell you, it has been an absolute pleasure for me to be around those guys. It's been a lot of fun. As usual, Dave Reisner worked his tail off behind the scenes with Matt Moret and Eddie Salter. And now it's his turn to try and get a shot at one of these elusive birds. Well, that was a close call. You know, we, uh, Mark talked me into getting a tag. He not only talked me into it, he actually bought my Missouri tag for me, which is very nice, but um, we got one to strike all the way around the other side of the road. We're coming in and uh, ran into this turkey right out in the middle of the field. And we bumped him with the truck more or less, but he really, he wasn't too, um, too excited about it. He kept strutting. So we thought, well, Mark put it in neutral back down the, back down to the low spot. We snuck out and crawled and, you know, we, we got to play. I mean, I could have probably taken a long shot, but, you know, it's just not worth it. And it was still a truck issue. He came in and if you turn around and I can watch, you can see our truck is right there with doors blazing open and everything else. And it was a truck issue. That's all it was. And, you know, it was fun. I mean, your heart gets bumping when I see him coming up over that hill and he was close. He just wasn't close enough. So we're going to go ahead and get after that one. That was Goblin, so. I got one question. Why didn't this decoy drag that gobbler in? I mean, how, hey. what more do we need? Hey, do you think we ought to get up there on this bird? Well, if you think you can, Coon, that's a great idea. Yeah, I think if we go through he that gap. to get this way. I know. What if we go through that gap and cut him off? All we gotta do is come up here. You're yeah. the man of the plan, you know. Well, he wanted to come, like you said, he wanted to come this way. Let's do it. All right, let's, let's get up do there. it. Turkeys had to be somewhere in here. You guys listen. I don't want to hear it. Jumped on you again. Two birds. Two birds. Well, we ain't got more. See what, y'all? I'm gonna put the veto out here. Well, we had to get around on this turkey. We, uh, the truck kind of spooked him, but he was in the right mood. And, uh, so we got around on it, and it looks like he picked up a friend because we heard two goblins right in here. It seems like they're coming, but we, we do have a fence in our way. They're, they're coming through those cedars. It's thick, but they're coming.
Okay, I can back. Dave, anybody deserved a turkey you did, I tell you. Following, uh, you know, following me around and, and Terry and uh, coming out here this morning and I tell you what, it's been exciting having you, you know, at running a camera and hey, this is just the icing on the cake. This is totally icing on the cake. You know, Mark kind of went overboard and he said, hey, we might as well get you a tag. And you know, that was totally unexpected for me. I, I, I didn't expect that when I came down. I knew I was filming you and the special little hunt yeah. that, that Mark and you guys had put together. And you know, I was just glad to be a part of it. And then. Mark throws that on me, uh, you know, and this is the end of it. And that's all, just, what a, what a hunt. That's awesome. That's awesome, let's, let's go. Let's go do it, bud. As usual, Missouri proved to be a gold mine. And now we're headed back to another one of our favorites, Kansas and the Lazy D. You know, Monday, I was looking forward to having Rick Mag come out, team member of Drury Outdoors. Not hunted with Rick before. Well, it was awesome to finally get out here and hunt turkeys at the Lazy D Ranch with my good friend, Dan Thurston. You know, I was just in for a couple days, so I didn't know what to expect. Hunting we will go. <laughs> We're assuming these birds pitched down out of the timber along the river. They've came up, and now they're in the pasture up here, up on these rims, strutting and carrying on on the high side up here. It's drier, sunny. I think they'll be up here on these edges, up in the pastures. You know, we were in this spot a couple nights and we actually were on birds the first evening and uh, they just didn't work for us. They flew up the roost and uh, we backed out and we thought we had something good the next morning. Sure enough, torrential rain. We just backed out and uh, said we'd leave it till the, the final day. We'll just move down this, my west fence line. Uh, we'll make some calls, see if we can't get one fired up. It's so calm this morning versus the last two or three days. Well, when, I didn't know what to expect this morning. We, it was a beautiful, clear morning. We got in there, we got right to where we wanted to be, and the turkeys just started gobbling. You know, he came out in that field, he strutted, gobbled, strutted. Before you know it, he was in the field. He must have came nearly 300 yards. For some reason, that gun didn't go off. I had to jack that shell and, and uh, recycle the firing pin so I could put him down. I think I was trying to be like Terry. All right. <laughs> Did you hear that? Clip? Did you hear that? I misfired and the gun didn't fire. It had a shell in it. It had a, sh a shell in it. I don't know what happened. Yes. That bird drove me nuts. Oh, we've watched that bird for how long? I mean, two days. Oh, two days. I swear I had four heart attacks with him coming across that field. You know, the thing I liked about it, Rick was, you could tell he was pumped. He was excited, and I liked that reaction. Yeah. Awesome morning here in Kansas. I gotta tell you, it's a, kind of a dream come true for me. I'm uh, hunting here with Dan Thurston at the Lazy D. And uh, Mark and Terry have hunted here for years and just rave about the deer hunting and turkey hunting. And, you know, I just had to know. I was out here on business and 
actually was able to spend a couple days with Dan and we were on these birds a couple night, nights ago and they were just taut with hens and they flew up and we tried to get on them yesterday morning and that didn't work out after a big rain and we left them go till the day and I'm glad we did. We, uh, we set up, you know, kind of between where we thought they'd be and uh, this bird was just, he was hot. He came down and worked all the way across this field right to us and uh, I tell you, I was worked up enough watching him come that whole way. But when I pulled the trigger and all I heard was click, I had a heart attack. Gave a little double pump there and got her done. <laughs> I'm happy. With a great success in Kansas, we're now going to get the second part of the adventure that Brian Thompson and Jason Franzen started earlier in this tape. We're going back to Wisconsin. Wisconsin's spring turkey season is set up a little bit uniquely from different states. They actually have six separate seasons uh, and each of them are five day seasons and you as the hunter actually have to draw a specific season along with a specific zone uh, in order to be able to participate in the 2004 spring turkey hunt. Jason was fortunate enough to draw the very first season whereas I drew the very last season. Finally sixth season was here and it was my turn to film Brian and I couldn't have been more excited. I was probably more excited to get behind the camera and to film him on his turkey season. Right away on Wednesday at about noon, I finally got a, a bird to answer in the open, and it did not take long for this turkey to just come screaming in. The first bird that we finally got fired up and hot was about 12 o'clock, and he ran across a field. It had to have been 200 yards, and this bird rounded the corner. And I turned to Jason and I said, you tell me when. I, I just knew that it was all gonna come together, and I could not have been more excited. And as he finally got to that magical moment where I thought, the action was going to come together. Yes. I whispered to Brian, take him. No, 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 no. <laughs> and to my amazement, the screen blanked out. My elbow went right in front of that screen. Jason starts yelling, no, 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 no. And as a cameraman, I, my heart just sank. Well, having a positive attitude in a lot of other places to hunt, Jason and I, you know, uh, went to another spot. And within the next hour, we struck another bird. Well, as a cameraman, it was difficult because typically we set up on a tripod and in this scenario, we got the bird fired up and it was an unbelievable grade. It was, I'm guessing, 45 degrees. Uh, bird steps out, full strut, four steps away, not further than four steps. And I said to Jason, are you on him? And I, I couldn't find him in the viewfinder and I'm scanning around and Brian's like right there off my gun barrel. and he didn't see him. And I was sitting there pointing <laughs> with my finger, saying right down my gun barrel, right down my gun barrel, trying the best that I could to you know, alert him to where that bird was. Well, I was looking off his gun barrel, but I was projecting out to 40 to 50 yards. What I needed to be doing is projecting out to about four or five yards because the bird was actually within feet of us. And unfortunately, I never saw it. And again, it cost us a bird. The two encounters that we had had really aided in helping us in direction where we were headed the next morning. So the very next morning, we had made a plan that we were gonna hunt this chisel field that Brian had actually scouted and glassed a really nice flock of birds there. Well, that next morning found us right in the corner of a chisel plowed old cornfield. These birds just started pitching out of the tree and it was awesome. It was like being on the runway of a, you know, Chicago O'Hare Airport. These birds were like big 747s just kind of sailing in. Uh, just neat footage, neat uh, opportunity to watch these birds pitch into the field. And there were way more birds there than we actually expected. We had only heard a single gobble on the roost that morning. Well, the three gobblers came out of the tree first, and I thought, you know, I had finally convinced them, and they started marching right towards the decoys. The first three birds out of the tree were three toms, and I thought we had it made. We were sitting there with uh, Featherflex decoys out and no other live birds to interject but three toms and a dirt field between us. Little did I know they were also, uh, you know, still end up late in the season and a variety of other hens began to pitch out in the field and they walked right in the middle of the field carrying those big long beards uh, away from us. It didn't help our cause and as all those birds marched away from us to two to three hundred yards out, my heart just sank as a cameraman. Well sitting there we were trying to figure out what we were going to do and uh, weren't quite sure. When I turned around and looked over in the decoys I was super surprised to see a hen standing there. 
she was dominant posturing, she was you know half strutting, she was circling these decoys, and it was awesome because the wind would blow the feather flex decoy at the perfect time, and she'd get all nervous and excited, and she'd uh, you know kind of respond back as that decoy would actually kind of almost jump out at her. As this was all occurring, I didn't realize, I kind of looked back to my right, and, and here came two jakes. They were kind of intrigued at what the hen was doing and, and saw our decoys, and they began marching right in. Well, as that parade continued, I turned around and looked back, and I couldn't believe it, because one of the big three longbeards branched off, and he began marching right in. But he stopped, and he stood in one position and stared and stared and stared. Well, as those birds marched in, the tom stopped at about 25 yards. I gave him the green light. Yeah. And I let him have it. Yeah. And what an exciting feeling it was to see that head just snap and go down and him pop up and walk out to that bird. It was just the ultimate peak of our turkey season and we'd achieved our goals of the season. <laughs> it was awesome. I'm telling you what, to see that bird just rip over backwards and his neck just kind of snap back. And uh, when I was walking out there, what an absolute relief. What an absolute thrill. The jinx is finally over. We did it. Well, the jinx is off. <laughs> Jason and I spent the last day and a half, we had three different birds right in within 10 yards of us and didn't get it shot. And finally this morning it broke. The jinx is off. Jason and I connected on a beautiful tom this morning and as you can see it's nasty weather. We chose to set up in this open cut cornfield. Turkeys like to spend time on nasty weather like this when it's rainy and windy out in the middle of the fields and, and we kind of had that hunch it was going to be nasty this morning watching the weather channel and it worked perfectly. Finally, oh, he followed two jakes in a hand right into us and right in our lap, but I'm a fired up hunter right now, I tell you. Mm, what a gorgeous day. Even though the weather sucks, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Thank you for watching Longbeard Madness Volume 9. If you haven't had enough explosive turkey hunting action, check out our Longbeard Madness Volume 10. It is filled to the brim with useful information, exciting stalks, and dynamic impacts that will get your blood pumping. We appreciate you taking the time to share our fantastic hunts with us, and we wish you luck in the turkey seasons to come. As always, we made this for you.